We're going to place a class one composite in tooth number three, first molar. In this simulated example, we've just anesthetized the patient, and while we're waiting for anesthesia, we're going to inject a clear bite registration material onto the surface of tooth number three. When we do this, we place the tip touching the tooth, express the material quickly towards the end, and run the clear bite registration material through the grooves of the tooth, constantly keeping the tip in contact with the surface of the tooth. This allows air to be flushed out, and then I come off to the mesial to allow definition, to allow an easy replacement and orientation of my custom matrix. Now before this sets, I take a clear mylar strip and we lay this right on the surface of this unset material and lightly make a flat surface. This is to allow later on a flat end of a light curing bundle to put even pressure on this while we clear through it. It also allows light to go through more easily. Since this is a bite registration material, it sets usually within about 45 seconds to a minute and a half. In the mouth, it'll set faster than here. So in this case, what we're going to do is start a preparation on tooth number three and show you how we go about restoring that. And then we'll use this custom matrix that is made from a clear bite registration material to restore and finish the composite restoration that we're going to place with minimal or no finishing or polishing. Hard to believe. You'll see how we can save five to ten minutes on every composite that is placed. The material is now set, the clear bite registration material. The mylar strip easily comes off since there's no bonding between the mylar and the polyvinyl siloxane clear bite registration material. And this comes easily off the tooth. And I'm going to try to show you the fine detail that you can see in this or in this clear custom matrix. It's very difficult to show a clear entity, but that's what we're going to try to do here. You get some feeling for the anatomy in the tooth, all the developmental grooves and accessory grooves and surface texture are trapped in this very accurate polyvinyl siloxane bite registration material. We've now cut a class one cavity preparation in tooth number three, maxillary right first molar. We're now going to restore this in composite using the custom matrix we made previously. We're going to restore this in two increments. The first increment will be about a millimeter and a half thick, and the second increment will also be about a millimeter and a half thick. We're going to use an enamel shade, and we take the compule, we put it right down to the bottom of the box, and inject material into the tooth. And then we're going to condense that using a smooth surface composite condenser. And we're condensing this only to make sure that we have no voids and it's in good contact with the tooth. And we're now going to cure this using 
a light curing unit for the normal amount of time, which in this case is about 20 seconds. The only requirement when using a custom matrix technique when applying multiple increments is the next to last increment cannot be over contoured. If it is, then the final custom matrix cannot be seated completely and the occlusion will be off. Now we're going to place the final increment of composite and we're going to place only what we will consider a slight excess of material. And we'll look at this and we see that maybe we have just a slight excess so we're going to get rid of some of this material. This is often the case that you will end up adding more material than you think is appropriate. We still want to condense this to make sure that we have no voids any place. And we don't want to have any material, material beyond the cable service margin because that's simply going to be flash. So I'm getting rid of some of that right now. Now we're going to take the custom matrix that we made previously. We'll place it back over the tooth. Should fit fairly snugly. And we put pressure on it with our finger for five seconds, five to ten seconds. And I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, about five pounds of pressure. If I weren't wearing gloves, you'd see my uh, fingernail blanching. And now I'm going to take the light curing bundle, put that on the flat surface created. I'm going to make pressure again on this, make sure that it doesn't move and that it continues to maintain pressure on the composite as it cures, curing in the original anatomy, surface texture, and occlusion that this patient was comfortable with when they walked into the operatory. I cure this for the normal amount of time. And now the proof of the pudding is when I take this off and you can see the anatomy. Now I've definitely gotten some flash here. But I also want you to take a look at the anatomy that we have created. Now the flash, if we didn't etch far beyond our margins, can be removed with a number 12 blade. But imagine, after light curing, your composite has a hard, smooth surface, as smooth as the original tooth, all the anatomy that the patient was comfortable with when they walked into your operatory. This tooth now needs minimal finishing or polishing. I might be able to bring this into even better. So it's closer view so that you can see the anatomy and the margins. Let's probe the margins now with an explorer. And notice that we could slide. There's only a slight catch in some of these areas. If we slide, there's a little catch there. Not much there. What I would do in these cases is take a 7408 carbide, 12 fluted carbide finishing burr, pear shaped or football shaped, and run it along the margins, just removing this small catch on the on the margin.